This 7 million parameter model, that is million with an M, is beating some of the top frontier models out there at the hardest reasoning benchmarks. It has already defeated Gemini 2.5 Pro, DeepSeek, O3 Mini, and others. And it is a fraction of their size using a new approach that has taken everybody by surprise. I'm going to break it all down for you right now. And yes, I have a new background. I'm setting up my new office right now. Here's the paper, and there is a single author from Samsung. This is called Less is More Recursive Reasoning with Tiny Networks. Listen to this. With only 7 million parameters, TRM, Tiny Recursive Model, obtains 45% test accuracy on Arc AGI 1 and 8% on Arc AGI 2. Those numbers may sound small, but they're better than most other frontier models out there. And it has less than 0.01% of the parameters. So how did they do this? All right, let's take a step back. Why do large language models sometimes frequently fail at hard reasoning problems. Large language models struggle on hard question answer problems, and this is because they generate their answer auto regressively, meaning they're simply predicting the next token. There is a high risk of error since a single incorrect token can render an answer invalid. To improve their reliability, LLMs rely on chain of thoughts. You've probably heard of that. The thinking mode of a model, the reasoning mode. So a model like GPT-5 will actually churn through a lot of tokens thinking of different solutions to the prompt. And then when it finally comes to a good answer, it gives you the output. So techniques like that have vastly improved the quality of these large language models. And this has been an entire new scaling law, test time compute, which means at inference time, when you prompt a model, it's going to scale up the number of tokens used to think about the response to your prompt. Chain of thoughts seek to emulate human reasoning by having the LLM to sample step-by-step -step reasoning traces prior to giving their answer. But chain of thought is expensive, requires high quality reasoning data, and can be brittle since the generated reasoning may be wrong. And then there's this other technique, which is you've probably heard pass at K. And K is the number of sample responses a model generates. And then one, the best one, hopefully, is chosen. So let's say you ask a question, what is five times five? The model will generate maybe 10 different responses, and whichever one is the most accurate, it will select and give you. But this is the core of the issue. The models aren't actually reasoning. They're just predicting the next token. And that's what this paper aims to solve, and again, at a fraction of the model size. And so they talk a lot about the ARC Prize. Shout out to Greg Cameron and the ARC Prize team. While LLMs have made significant progress on ARC AGI, since 2019, human level accuracy still has not been reached six years later as of writing this paper. LLMs struggle on the newer ARC AGI 2, and there's actually an ARC AGI 3 that was just published, and they struggle even more on that. Gemini 2.5 Pro only obtains 4.9% test accuracy with a high amount of test time compute, a lot of tokens being used. Very expensive. Then recently, there has been a new proposed path forward, which is hierarchical reasoning models, which obtains high accuracy on puzzle tasks where LLMs struggle to make a dent. Sudoku, Maze Pathfinding, and ArcAGI. HRM is a supervised learning model with two main novelties. One, recursive hierarchical reasoning, and two, deep supervision. Let me explain what this actually is. So first, recursive hierarchical reasoning consists of recursing, you can think of it simply as going in a loop, multiple times through two small networks. The authors of this approach provide some biological arguments in favor of recursing at different hierarchies based on the different temporal frequencies at which the brains operate. So they're saying, hey, this is much more akin to how the human brain works, and so thus, we should try this approach. But there are some problems with that explanation. We'll come back to that in a moment. And by the way, here is the pseudocode for a tiny recursion model. Look how short it is. And the cool thing is, if you wanna try coding this up, you can do so with the sponsor of today's video, Mocha. Mocha is an AI app builder designed for absolutely anyone. No coding experience required, no technical background, simply take your ideas and make them reality. All you need to do is write one prompt and you get a full app 
built. Here's a demo of Mocha in action. The prompt is build me an AI avatar app with billing. And within just one minute, Mocha generates a fully functional website. The app included both free and paid tiers. And Mocha independently created a full monetization strategy with Google authentication. To test it, we click on the authentication button to make sure it works and successfully signed up to the platform. Then a Stripe link is provided and Mocha is asked to integrate it into the platform for subscriptions. Then it added payment processing, resulting in a ready for monetization app. So if you don't want to juggle Supabase, Firebase, and a half a dozen other APIs, Mocha is the way to go. So get started with Mocha and get your first project going today. I'll drop a link down in the description below. Check them out, click through, let them know I sent you. And now back to the video. Deep supervision consists of improving the answer through multiple supervision steps while carrying the two latent features as initialization for the improvement steps. And what that basically means is it's solving hard problems as really small steps. And at each step, it's taking notes and it's passing those notes to the next step. Now, how have those two features improved performance? Listen to this. Using deep supervision doubled accuracy over single step supervision, going from 19 to 39% accuracy, while recursive hierarchical reasoning only slightly improved accuracy over a regular model with a single forward pass, 35.7 to 39%. This means that the deep supervision feature is very good, very worth it, but the other hierarchical reasoning is not. But in this paper, well, let me just read it. We show that the benefit from recursive reasoning can be massively improved, making it much more than incremental. We propose tiny recursive model. That is what this paper is all about. An improved and simplified approach using a much smaller, tiny network with only two layers that achieves significantly higher generalization than HRM, on a variety of problems. Listen to these improvements. Sudoku Extreme, 55 to 87%. Maze Hard, 75 to 85. Arc AGI 1 from 40 to 45. And Arc AGI 2 from 5 to 8. Now from 5 to 8 might not sound like much, but that is actually a big improvement. And so what this recursive hierarchical reasoning is actually doing, an analogy would be like having two brains, one that's thinking really fast and one that's thinking really slow. And they're kind of working in a loop together, building off of each other. And it kind of worked. But the problem is we didn't quite understand how it was working and it was messy as well. And there was really no guarantee that this approach was going to always reach the best solution. Here are some of the biological arguments the original authors used. Listen to this. The HRM's authors justify the two latent variables and two networks operating at different hierarchies based on biological arguments, which are very far from artificial neural networks. They even try to match HRM to actual brain experiments on mice. And the author of this paper says, well, that's interesting. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. So given the lack of ablation table in their paper, the over-reliance on biological arguments and fixed point theorems that are not perfectly applicable, it is hard to determine what parts of HRM is helping what and why. Furthermore, it is not clear why they use two latent features rather than other combinations of features. Why not use one? Why not use four? And so that's where this paper's proposal comes in. Tiny recursive models. Contrary to HRM, TRM requires no complex mathematical theorem, hierarchy, nor biological arguments. So their point is, it's not really valuable to say, well, the human brain is like this, thus that's why we did it. Well, that's not enough. We need to know why it actually works. It being TRM generalizes better while requiring only a single tiny network instead of two medium sized networks. And so TRM takes the previous approach, takes one feature from it, which is recursion and wipes out everything else. It says this is the most important part. And we think we can actually do much better with just this one piece of the puzzle and simplifying everything else. It's just a feedback loop that continues to improve itself. So here is their simpler reinterpretation of that recursion. HRM, the previous approach, is interpreted as doing hierarchical reasoning over two latent features of different hierarchies due to arguments from biology. However, one might wonder, 
why use two instead of one, three, or more? And do we really need to justify these so-called hierarchical features based on biology to make sense of them? We propose a simple, non-biological explanation, which is more natural and directly answers the question of why there are two features. The new approach is elegant. The model keeps two memories, its current guess and the reasoning trace to get to that guess. Each recursion updates both of them. Think about it like this. It's like trying a move in Sudoku, thinking about why it worked or didn't work, and then making an adjustment and trying again. And so why two layers? Well, surprisingly, we found that adding layers decreased generalization due to overfitting. In doing the opposite, decreasing the number of layers while scaling the number of recursions, the number of loops, proportionally, we found that using two layers instead of, let's say, four, maximized generalization. It is quite surprising that smaller networks are better, but two layers seems to be the optimal choice. So we usually think bigger is better. In fact, that's kind of the scaling laws that we've been using from training to post-training, test time compute, more, better. But that's actually different than what they found here. What the recursion gives you is kind of a virtual depth. It's almost like simulating having more. Now, this paper goes through a lot of the math that they use to get this to work. And I'm not gonna go over that right now. To be frank, it's a little bit beyond my expertise. And so if you wanna check it out, of course, I'm gonna drop a link to this paper down in the description below. All right, so let's look at some of the results. First, let's look at how HRM, the previous approach, compares to TRM, the current approach, as we're scaling up the number of recursions. So check this out. Here we see with HRM, as we increase the depth, the number of recursions, we see a little improvement and then it pretty much stalls. However, with less depth, we can actually see a much greater improvement on TRM. And OOM means out of memory. The GPUs basically ran out of memory because if you're doing too much recursion, you run out of memory. It's storing all of those loops. And now let's look at the ARC AGI benchmark. So here we can see a bunch of models and down here is TRM. So as we can see here, TRM scored a 44.6 on ARC1 and a 7.8 on ARC2. Now, look at this. Here's DeepSeq R1, a much lower score. Claude 3.7, a lower score. Gemini 2.5 Pro, a lower score. The only model that did better was Grok4 Thinking, and it did significantly better, actually, but it is a massive model. We're talking about over a trillion parameters as compared to a 7 million parameter model. And so what does all this mean? Well, let me actually just explain in the simplest terms what this technique actually does. It thinks of an answer, then it thinks about that answer, then it critiques itself, it revises the answer, and then does that over and over again until it thinks it has the best possible answer. And so now we have this 7 million parameter model that is incredibly good at reasoning, at solving puzzles like Sudoku. And so this might be the path to AGI, and it might be smaller than we ever thought. And why is that good? Well, imagine being able to run this model on your computer or even your phone. I mean, a 7 million parameter model can easily run on basically any device. And so maybe we just discovered a new scaling law. Maybe recursion is the new scaling law. How deep can we go into the layers? So the models themselves don't need to be enormous, but the compute still does. If you want to find out more about this paper, I'll drop a link down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.